wonderful to have spring in July. <laughs> Isn't God kind? Isn't He gracious? We're reminded this morning as His children, as He speaks to us and feeds us on His holy meal and this precious word, we're reminded that we have a generous God. In your life and mine, because we are His children as His children, God's generosity is played out over and over and over again. Sometimes, sometimes in our humanity, because we are also human, sometimes in our humanity, that slips away from us, gets to the sideboards of our lives. We forget about her, we don't see her, we get distracted, and, and so this moves off of the radar screen, but because we are children of the kingdom, because He calls us together, brings us together, one of the things God does in His house, in His presence, is He reminds us again what a generous God He is. This morning we focus our hearts and our lives on this word from Him, this powerful and precious and wondrous word that speaks to people of the kingdom. Listen to it with your heart. Just as you have, now hear the word, every single word, just as you have received Jesus as your Lord, so live in Him. Be rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, abounding in thanksgiving. I brought something to show you this morning. I wasn't going to tell Renee, but she's here, so I can't hide it from her. I went out in the backyard today before it even got light. I snuck over to one of her plants, and, and oh gosh, don't break them. And I cut these because I wanted you to see them. Aren't they beautiful? Huh? You told me they'd grow back. <laughs> Aren't they, aren't they lovely? They're what? Well, I know they're flowers, but they're what? They're hydrangeas. Now, you, you understand if you, if you know anything about hydrangeas, they, they bloom according to what the soil they're in. The, the color they are is determined by the soil they're in. They don't smell like anything, but gosh, aren't they beautiful. Say amen. amen. Now, here's the thing, though, loved ones. These are phony as a $3 bill. <laughs> They're fake. I didn't go out in the backyard and cut them. She had them laying on the dryer in the, in the laundry room. I took them out of a basket. When we're done, we're going to take it and put them back. They're phony. This is what I want you to hear. Appearances, appearances. Oh, I'll move it over here. Appearances can be really deceiving. Sometimes what really looks good on the outside, what looks like it should be something special and wonderful, Turns out to be, well, let's use the word here, <coughs> phony, fake. Which brings me to what we want to talk about this morning, our subject. The Bible calls it, if you were listening to the word this morning, the Bible calls it living in the Lord. Listen to it. The Bible calls it living in the Lord. It's not just having a surface facade that looks good, like those flowers. I know that there's people, and in our sinful nature, as sinful human beings, it's true of all of us to some degree, I know there's people who think that the Christian faith is really all about the facade. It's about how you dress, and how you look, and what you do, and where you stand, and is it pleasing to the people around you, and do you look like a Christian? For some people, oh, no, I better do this more carefully, for all of us, because we're sinful human beings, boy, we fall into this of thinking that as long as it looks good on the outside, good to go. And then comes this, this reminder for us, this biblical reminder. It's not about some kind of good-looking facade. This, this that you and I have been given with Jesus, listen, it is about a connection with Him that is personal and authentic one where He is, as Paul reflects in this word by the power of the Holy Spirit, one where He is Lord of our lives. Listen to what that means. Lord of our hearts. Lord of our souls. Lord of our minds. This one who has reached out and with His blood has, has made us whole again, has forgiven our sins and claimed us as His own. This Jesus takes up residence in us and for us and with us and becomes, I'll use this word again, He becomes Lord of our lives. The, the, the very center, the very center of our living. It's a relationship, loved ones, that the Lord intends to define you and me. 
It's not simply, and you know this, but let's speak it out loud this morning. It's not simply that we step away from the regularness of our lives out there, the six and a half days out there, and for an hour or two we step into a holy place, and here we're Christians wearing our ties and combing our hair and being all straightened up. It's not that. For us, it is something that is so much deeper and richer. This, this relationship with Jesus is one in which Everything about us is touched by him and shaped by him and molded by him. It identifies and, 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 and puts the label on us of who, who exactly we are. The relationship with Jesus, listen to me, it is, meant, it is meant to show our hearts and the God we belong to and the people around us what we really and truly believe in our lives. Not what we pretend to believe. Not what we pick and choose out of the banquet of life. Listen to this. This relationship with Jesus informs and conforms the very, the very nature and essence and substance of what we believe as people of the kingdom. This relationship with Jesus, listen. This relationship with Jesus is meant to inform, conform, and shape how we live. Now I know... So I need to say this to you out loud so you hear it. The guy standing in front of you this morning is just the biggest, just as big a sinner as everybody sitting out there. Say amen. amen. No, say it again. Say amen. amen. So we're all in the same boat here. And I, and I want you to know this. That means that my life, just like yours, at times, the people who live with me know this is true. My life, just like yours, is marked by, is, is, is sometimes framed by, sometimes identified by being an awful human being. I will say things and do things and act in ways that are unholy and unrighteous. I suspect I'm not alone. Can I hear an amen? amen. That's all of us. But listen, this relationship that we've been given with the Lord Jesus Christ, this connection to him that is not phony or fake or just a facade, it is a living, breathing reality for us. This informs who we are and what we believe in. Listen to me. And it informs how we live. For people like us, for you and me, to have that kind of a relationship with the, with the very creating God is, is something that we can't even come close to doing. It takes, you hear me this morning, it takes divine work. So this is what the Lord does. He reaches into your life and mine, and he takes us by the heart and by the soul. And he plants us deep in the soil of his resurrection. Jesus takes us to the place, us sinful, dying, broken people. He takes us to the place of his life, his resurrection life, his immortal life. He joins our hearts to his heart. He joins our souls to his soul. In him and through him and by him, we become living, eternal, immortal children of the Heavenly Father, planted deep in the soil of his resurrection. And then, my loved ones, because his love for us is real and strong, he nurtures these children that he has planted in that soil. He nurtures us by his grace. This morning, in, in this place, in this hour, this eternal God, this kind Savior, speaks his word, <clears throat> shares his meal, and in this word and in this holy supper, he nurtures our hearts and our souls so that this life that he's created in us and for us can continue to grow and flourish be exactly what he desires and wants for us to be. This life, you hear me this morning, this life that he has given us is this life that he's created in us is absolutely fully and completely alive, authentic, real, complete. Today as his children, because of this kind work of the Lord, you and I who had no hope are so filled with hope. We who were dying in our sins live forgiven. 
Those of us who had no life to look forward to now live in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And just listen, just listen, loved ones, to what that does in our lives. As you and I, by his grace, as we live in the Lord, intimately connected to Jesus, being thankful plays an ever-increasing role for us. This is what it sounds like. We are grateful for what we can see because as his children who live in him and by him, we know that everything around us and for us comes through him to us. We, slow down, Pastor. We look around in our lives and, oh my gosh. Because we're living, we don't, we don't look at the things around us and think that's here in my life because I've earned it or I deserve it or, or somehow I've worked for it. We, as his living children, we look at the things around us, the people around us, the gifts around us, and we know that every single part of it has come from the Lord. Today in your life, here is a marker for you, child of the kingdom. Do you want to know if you're living in the Lord? Well, here's a marker for you. Do you see the things, the people, the, 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 the very substance of the life around you as all being things that God has given? If you do, praise God, you're alive in Him. I understand there's always going to be a struggle for us. I'm always going to want to grab onto the idea that somehow I have, I have because of what I've done. That's our humanity under the blood of Jesus. Listen, under the blood of Jesus, there is ever more thankfulness, gratefulness, because I begin to recognize, I grow in recognizing in my life that what is in my life is a gift of the Lord. And loved ones, listen to me. There is such deep gratitude for what we can't see yet. Because we know there's more to come. Here's a sign of life. That inside of you and me and growing through us and through our minds and our tongues and our hearts and our souls is this absolute certainty. There is more to come. Praise God. It's the kind of thankfulness that just spills over into life. When Christ lives in us and with us and for us and through us, when you and I as his children, when we live in the Lord, this, this growing gratitude just kind of colors everything in life. It changes our perspective. It grows our contentment. We're happier for it. We're more settled in it. And we're more open and righteous about letting it spill over on the people around us. For his people. For God's people. For us. Living in the Lord is so much more than just surface stuff. It's having a relationship with Jesus that encompasses everything about us. And one that will stretch all the way to eternity. So this morning, this morning for this life, for being rooted in Him and established in Him, for growing in Him and being built up in Him, for the gift of living in the Lord, we as His children, we are so thankful. On this morning in his house, this is a teaching of the Lord. If you would rise, please.